people welcome back to fired up garage this morning we're just doing some maintenance on uh, this old mower that we got it had no spark tested it out so uh, this is the coil I'll show you where that was but the coil is bad on this one so we're gonna replace it this morning and then we're gonna fire it up so this is a 15.5 horse overhead valve Briggs and Stratton engine and uh, we're gonna replace the coil on it so I already removed there was a cover here so basically you got to get this top cover off you remove the two screws here from the starter cover and then there's a screw uh, a bolt here bolt here there's two bolts on the front and there's one bolt on this back corner over there uh, so once you take all that off you can just lift the cover off your dipstick is going to come with all of this as you take it off so if you're worried about what's underneath you might want to get a rag ready and that just lifts off like that and then our coil goes right here. I already removed this one and uh, tested it. So the coil goes like this right here. And it's basically just an electromagnet. So on your flywheel, you have, you have a dissimilar metal and every time it passes by the coil, it creates an electrical current. And this coil that was on here was bad. So I ordered a new one ordered it on Amazon um, the way that you figure out which one you need if you have one of these older mowers or something is uh, you get the engine code model number all that kind of stuff up here on the front you can go on Briggs and Stratton's website and you put in that information there and then uh, you can actually get the entire uh, owner's manual for your tractor and you can also get a parts list on there so I just looked that up found which coil I needed it gave me the part number and then uh, I went on eBay, I mean, uh, sorry, on Amazon, and uh, looked up that part number and found the coil. It was about, for these riding lawnmowers, 15.5, I think it was about 35 bucks or something like that. So I ordered a new coil. I got a new spark plug boot at the same time, oil filter, all that kind of stuff. So we'll do some basic service on it as we go. And you get a tool, a free tool. When you buy the coil, this is actually your tool. So you have to shim the coil to be on a, a certain distance from the flywheel. And so they give you a card that is the correct distance in this case. So we're gonna lay that in there and make sure that it's the proper distance between the flywheel and the armature so that it doesn't have any problems. So I've got the old coil and the new coil here so you can see the differences. The new coil is a little bit smaller. Um, it, this is the same part number, but I think it's been updated over the years. Uh, one other difference is that this point right here where you hook up the uh, kill wire on it is a little bit further over this is upside down now, but a little bit further over to the right here. This one's a little further over to the left. So I needed some more wire because the wire wouldn't reach it. So I just had to reach down in here and uh, you can get some more wire because it's got extra in this loom. So I just had to pull a little bit more wire through and up so that that uh, will reach all the way over there. And uh, then on your coil, it actually says, if you look closely, it says this side out and then it says cylinder side. So that tells you which way this orients. I already checked the length of the spark plug wire and that's all good. I bought a boot for it so we'll put the boot on there and then we'll go ahead and throw this thing on and see if we can fire it up. So I've got a new spark plug for it. We'll go ahead and swap that out real quick. Old spark plug. Got the new plug, nice and clean. I went ahead and got the Briggs and Stratton one because it wasn't that much more expensive. All right, new plugs in. Now let's go ahead and slap our coil on here. I'm gonna actually attach the spark plug wire first. Our coil's 
coil sits here. We gotta hook up this shut off wire right here. All right, got the shut off wire hooked up. And this is gonna sit right here like this. We're gonna have to gap that, but let me grab the screws for it. So we got these two longer screws. Lightly snug that, but we still have to gap it, don't forget. All right, so they're snugged up, but we can still move it. And then you're gonna slide this in there, and that's gonna be your gap right there for each side. All right, so we got our shim in there. We've got those kind of loosely tightened up. I'll see if I can this one-handed it's not very much space at all it's gotta be pretty tight on there all right so we got that side okay. And then tight. All right, so we got our distance correct there. Everything's hooked up on the coil, so now we just got to put the cover back on and test it. So now it's time to put our cover back on. We're going to go ahead and lay the starter motor cover back on first it gets bolted on top but you can't get it on very easily without putting it in place first and then we're going to put our engine cover on here you can see there's a little groove where our spark plug wire can run without being straight up against that flat edge so as we lower it down make sure your dipstick goes back into place and doesn't get one of those wires pinched in it then you just kind of work it on Oops, that's gonna go. The starter cover has to go up on the outside here, like this. Get a lot easier with two hands. Normally I have my tripod for this, but I don't have it this morning. Sadly. All right, now that all looks good. Then we just put the screws back in all of this. And uh, so you just have a series of a couple of machine screws and then these two that have the funky shoulder on them go up here on the front. A couple of spots up there on the front for those. Tighten it all down and we'll see if we can fire this thing up. All right, so we just wrapped up the replacement of the coil and the spark plug on this one. You might be asking yourself, why not just uh, take it in somewhere and get it fixed? We probably saved 100 bucks on the repair by doing this ourselves. Some of you guys might be saying, why are you fixing that old tractor anyways? This is a 2002, so this is 18 years old. And you know, 30, 50 bucks a year or something, you keep it going. And uh, I know sometimes it'd be easier to just pick up a new one and be done with it, but my goal is to keep this thing going as long as possible so I can keep that uh, 750 or 1,000 bucks for a new one invested in other stuff. This thing will probably last me uh, maybe 30, 40 years if I take care of it, you know? So that's what I'm going for. That's why we fix them. Let's see if it'll fire up. So there you go. We had no spark. Uh, went ahead and tested the coil out, replaced the coil, replaced the plug, fires up perfectly first time so we are back on the road back on the yard so have a great day keep firing them up